Throughout this playlist, we've seen multiple conditions that can result in impaired breathing, whether that's impaired inhalation, impaired exhalation, or both. But in many of these individuals, part or all of the problem may be weakness of the thoracic diaphragm. Now remember that the thoracic diaphragm is the major muscle of inhalation. So if the diaphragm is weak, then inhalation is going to be insufficient. And what do we do for weak muscles? Doesn't matter if it's the biceps, the quads, or the diaphragm. We strengthen them. So over here on the right, you see this nice device here called an inspiratory muscle trainer. And so this is good for individuals that have weakness in their diaphragm and possibly also external intercostals, which assist with inhalation. And so we can use this device to help strengthen the thoracic diaphragm. And again, this can be used in individuals with many different types of conditions. It could just be simple diaphragmatic weakness. Uh, in cases of dyspnea and COPD, it's very useful. Congestive heart failure, dysphagia. And then we also have neuromuscular diseases like amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, Guillain-Barre syndrome, and many more conditions and pathologies that I don't have enough space to list here. So without further ado, let's go into the tutorial where I demonstrate how to use an inspiratory muscle trainer. Now this is the type that I'm going to be using in the video. You can use any type of inspiratory muscle trainer and there's a huge variety of these online. I will actually put a link to the kind that I purchased in the description of this video. And it turns out that if you go on most websites, uh, they're actually not terribly expensive. Uh, so most people should be able to purchase one of these if they need to. So using an inspiratory muscle trainer like this is actually quite simple. Probably the most complicated part other than just learning the proper breathing patterns and pace would be which side goes up and which side goes down. So for this particular device, right here is of course the mouthpiece. You put your mouth on that to inhale and exhale through. And then over here on the left side, we have inhalation settings. You can see the dial there. It's set to level one, the lowest level. And then on the right side, you can see the exhalation setting. Again, it's set to the lowest level, level one. Okay. Now for this particular device, and note that some might be different, you position it such that the inhalation settings are on the left and the exhalation settings are on the right. So what you're looking at right here is the top of the device. So once you know your device's proper orientation and you have the inhalation and exhalation resistances at the correct settings for you personally, you're then going to place the device, the mouthpiece that is, in your mouth, and you're gonna go through the proper prescribed breathing cycles. So for example, we're gonna do a cycle where we inhale for a count of four seconds and then exhale for a count of eight seconds. Now, when we do the inhalation especially, we want most of the excursion outward to be at the level of the abdomen. So the hand that I'm not using, uh, so not holding the device, I'm gonna place on my abdomen about the level of the navel because when I inhale, I wanna feel my abdomen expand outwards. You want to minimize the amount of upper chest excursion. You're gonna have some, you can't help it, but you want the majority of the excursion to be at the abdomen. If you're doing that, most likely you are doing diaphragmatic or belly breathing correctly. So the 4-8 method would look something like this. So inhale for a count of four seconds, exhale for a count of eight. If those settings were too easy, you can always crank up the intensity a little bit, either for the inhalation or the exhalation, depending on exactly what you're trying to train. Although most people who get these devices are gonna be trying to train inhalation for strengthening the diaphragm and the external intercostal muscles. Another breathing technique you can do is a variation of this called the 4-7-8 method, where you inhale for a count of four seconds, hold your breath for seven seconds, and then exhale 
for a count of eight seconds. So the only difference between that and what we just did is there's a seven second hold in the middle of each cycle. That'll look something like this. And notice again with that breathing cycle, as you inhale, your abdomen should be where you feel the most expansion. If you're getting a ton of expansion up here in the upper chest versus in the abdomen, you're not doing diaphragmatic breathing correctly. And go take a look at the previous video in this playlist where we talk about how to perform correct diaphragmatic breathing. Thank you for all your support. Be sure to check out my Instagram for cool science and not science stuff.